Mm. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, one more, um, we're going to get to two more depending on time, um, but one more kind of like objection is that like open theism is just too novel of an idea. Um, you look at like most of church tradition, people would say, well, all these people believed in like the foreknowledge of God and they, they weren't open theists. Um, so it's just, it, we, we shouldn't make this radical departure from church tradition. Um, so what are your thoughts there? Yeah, that uh, to my mind is one of, of the strongest objections at least it's the one that worries mm -hmm. me the most yeah uh there's a lot of prof uh, that the, 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 there are a lot of protestants who, who who don't care at all about church tradition you know just you mm. know just the bible that's all we need yeah. <laughs> but uh as 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 somebody who's who's a recent type of convert to eastern orthodoxy i i i, I not at liberty to take that line Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of throw tradition out, you know, with the bathwater. Uh, yeah. uh, I, uh, you know, you know, um, the Eastern Orthodox Church, uh, you know, likes to describe itself as the Church of the Seven Councils, referring to the seven great ec ecumenical councils, mm -hmm. starting with the Council of Nicaea and uh, moving up, you know, several hundred years, to, you know, uh, before the great schism between East and West. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, and there's lots of indications in scripture that there was, were, were parts of tradition that were hand, handed on from the apostles to, to their descendants and stuff that weren't all, you know, always recorded in scripture. So, so there seems to be even in the Bible a testimony that 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 there's this apostolic deposit that's not wholly contained in Scripture. Even if Scripture is sufficient, it's not. Uh, it it doesn't contain everything that God has. Uh, God would have for us. In fact, the early church didn't even have a complete Scripture for the first yeah. couple of centuries. So, um, I. I so uh, I do want to give a high degree of deference to uh, the church councils, uh, especially the, the ecumenical ones, you know, the, the seven great ecumenical councils. Uh, I don't hold the view that tradition uh, in that sense has equal authority to scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, because scripture, we are specifically told, and, uh, uh, is God breathed, and uh, uh, and you when know, we have the scriptural promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, that I think implies that we should have a lot of deference to church tradition, especially when when it comes to things that have been believed everywhere, always, and by all. As mm. the saying goes, you, you know, yeah. you know, if there's stuff that that nearly everybody from the early church on has has held to be part of the faith, as you know, the, the deposits, you know, as part of the apostolic deposit, then then we should be very reluctant to to step outside that. Uh, uh, so, you know, we have this this promise of this gates of hell won't prevail against the church, and that. Scripture does tell us to test all things against Scripture, and, and, and so I think scriptural authority ultimately trumps the rest of tradition, though we should give a, 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 a high degree of deference to tradition. We shouldn't, we should be, you know, we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Uh, mm -hmm. We should defer to tradition whenever we can. Mm. Uh, so. So with that said, I would love to be able to say as an open theist that a majority of the church fathers were clearly on my side. I'd love to be able to say that. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, uh, I would love to be able to point to an ecumenical council or uh, an ecumenical creed in which open theism was explicitly considered to be within the scope of orthodoxy. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, that's not just that's just not the way things stand. Um, there is, however, a broad patristic consensus that fallen man possesses moral freedom. Uh, 
uh, this was contrary to uh, Calvin and the late Augustine, who was really kind of the first person to really introduce this idea of uh, kind of it's one more like general, you know, you know that that in, in his fallen state, man was completely incapable of doing good. That that mm -hmm. was Augustine's invention, more or less. Uh, the early church was almost unanimously of the view that 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 humans had libertarian freedom, even in their fallen state. Um, uh, so that much is congenial to open theism. Uh, but there also in the early church seems to have been a fairly broad consensus that God also had detailed foreknowledge of individual human free choices. Mm. That's inconvenient for open theism. Mm. Uh, in my view, though, it, it's not decisive. It's inconvenient, but it's not uh, a, 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 a decisive point against it. Uh, first, would say, you know, aside from some late uh, uh, conciliar pronouncements in the Roman church, this is after the schism, that explicitly exclude anything like open theism. You have nothing in the, in, in the seven great ecumenical type councils, mm. you know, uh, before yeah. the schism that says anything uh, for or against open theism. You know, or, or or the idea that God has specific foreknowledge of free will. So it's not something that has been pronounced on in an ecumenical council. Um, uh, the idea that seems to have been popular to early church had some kind of simple foreknowledge and or timeless knowledge view. Uh, was, was correct, seems to have been more or less taken for granted mm. by the early church without any real serious discussion or debate about the matter. Uh, so it's not as though the early church consciously and deliberately considered open theism and rejected it. They, they really didn't even consider it. Hmm. It just wasn't, wasn't, you know, a live option on the table for them. Uh, you know, so amidst like all the controversy about the Trinity and the nature of Christ, you know, the matter wasn't kind of really wasn't on the table for discussion. Uh, I kind of say, even if it had been considered and rejected at some point, while that would be really inconvenient for me, I, I, I don't think that would be itself completely decisive because again, scriptural authority trumps conciliar authority. Mm. Uh, Though, though it would likely require open theists to bite a bullet there uh, and to, you know, stand outside the mainstream apostolic tradition. Mm. You know, not a comfortable place to be if you put a lot of value on church tradition, mm. as I do. Um, uh, but ultimately, I'm, I'm more committed to, the, to, to truth with a capital T and to following the argument where it leads and the end to the specific deliverances of church councils. Uh, so, uh, so I can take some solace in the fact that open theism was not consciously considered and officially rejected mm. by the early church. Uh, even if it does run counter in some respects to prevailing majority opinion among the church fathers. Mm. Uh, so again, you know, that's, Maybe not a, a you know it's not as strong and decisive an answer as I would like to be able to give, but that's the best I can do with that one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>